All right. Hello, everybody. It is September 17th here. Cooking right along. <laughs> anyway, I um, got some uh, some announcements to make as far as like stuff I've been doing and uh, things just keeping you up to date. I I absolutely just let me just start by this. I absolutely love Kartra, but. I threw in the towel on their calendar system. Finally, <laughs> I've there's just some stuff about it that uh, I just I just find the one that I'm using is called Time Trade. It's 78 bucks for an entire year, and it's so smooth. It connects with the Google Calendar, and and it's pretty much flawless. I've used it for years in the past. And when I moved to the Kartra, I, I switched up, I canceled it, and now I've basically gone back to it. So I still use Kartra to opt in. So I just want to tell you kind of the sequence of how I use it, because it's, it's almost identical to what I was doing. It's just the only difference is I'm just using that one little tiny piece of the actual calendar function. I'm outsourcing that over to time trade. <clears throat> so, the way I do it is I have my opt-in box, just like I always did. When they opt in, the lead goes into my Kartra account, and the thank you page for the opt-in, I forward to the calendar scheduler in time trade. So they opt in, and my schedule for, for them to schedule an appointment pops up. Perfectly seamless. So <clears throat> I just wanted to tell you guys about that. Because that's, you know, I always do that. I always tell you what I'm doing, what I'm using, how I'm using it, all that. So, if Okay, I need remedial this. Kartra. What's that? Remedial Kartra. <laughs> Is there a link or an integration with time trade? How exactly do you get... Okay, you've got a Kartra opt-in page. You've got uh -huh. a Kartra thank you page. Yep. And then on the thank you page, it says, make your appointment. And people push that button and go right to time trade. Well, actually, I've even skipped that step. Okay. When, when you set up inside Kartra, when you create a form, <clears throat> there's on the end of the form, when you're setting up the form, they'll come to a piece where it says your success page. That's your thank you page. Okay. Rather than using a Kartra thank you page, what I'm doing, I'm sending them right to the time trade scheduler. So instead of instead of just sending them to the time trade and then having Kartra not be involved, I'm just kind of reversing the order. So uh, so that that's what I've basically decided to do for multiple reasons. One reason was my own idiosyncrasy of just not being able to deal with military time on the East Coast. <laughs> that, that just drove me nuts. And the fact that it, it, you know, it connects with the Google Calendar, but then that converts the time. So it was just, for me, it was just too much confusion. And I like things simple and smooth. So... Again, for, for those of you that are just popping on, <clears throat> the big news of the week is I've abandoned the Kartra calendar only. I love the rest of the program. I would never give it up for anything. It runs my entire business. It's just I've found that the calendar piece of it, as good as it, as it looks from the outside, it's just got too many little idiosyncrasies with it that they haven't figured out yet. And I know it's not a priority for them. They're adding a bunch of new features. One of the new features that they're adding is surveys. And that's going to be a big impact to have surveys right inside of Kartra. So that's coming. So again, they're not focused on the calendar and Long story short, I just decided to go with time trade for the calendar piece. So I'm just outsourcing the calendar, the actual scheduling part of the calendar out to time trade. 78 bucks a year, uh, certainly a bargain. 
It does it in your own time zone, works seamlessly, works flawlessly. So the sequence, again, for those of you that just popped on, I'm still using Carter to capture the leads. So like if you look at my web page, in fact, I'll show you guys. Let me just pull this up. And you can see exactly how I've integrated it. Okay, share screen. <clears throat> so on my site, I've got this free opt-in thing for the free 15 minute marketing review and strategy session. So this is a Kartra button. It's attached to a Kartra form. So when you click on that, it pops up the Kartra form. So here, I'm just gonna use this guy's info, schedule my session. Now that lead goes to Kartra and look what happened. This is the thank you page. So it sent me right to time trade to schedule the appointment. They click continue and they're right into my schedule and they can pick a time. So very simple, very easy. The times are all in, you know, you can set Pacific. If you're in a different time zone, you can change it there. It automatically detects. Another really cool thing is it automatically fills in stuff that's already on my Google calendar. <clears throat> that was another problem I found with the Kartra calendar itself was it said it synced and it would only sync one way. It wouldn't pull what other appointments were on my regular calendar. That was a big issue. Another issue is totally unexplainable. Kartra couldn't explain it. I can't explain it, but there's several people, some of you guys have been trying to schedule with me and I'm not getting the notifications. Didn't have any, I checked everything I could think of. It didn't have anything to do with deliverability. It was some sort of a glitch inside Kartra. I first thought it was maybe people that had opted out were, were not able to do it, but that wasn't it either. So anyway, that's what I've done. I've switched over to this calendar system. If uh, for those of you that are in the apprentice program, same thing. I had a couple of my apprentices that could not schedule appointments couldn't figure it out. So we've got a whole new system for all the scheduling. So if you're in the apprentice program, go onto the apprentice site and there's new links in there to schedule. So there should be no issues with scheduling with me at this point. Same thing for our resellers. Resellers are having the same problem. So we've got a new reseller link inside the reseller section. So if you guys need to schedule time, all the links are updated. We're, we're time trade friendly now. <laughs> so, and I'm loving it because I can go into my Google calendar and I can go in and I can mark off whole days that I'm going to be out of town or something and it automatically takes them off of the time trade. So major plus. I mean, for me, I love simplicity and that is a way for me to just really streamline my whole scheduling system. So if you're using Kartra and you're trying to use the scheduler, the calendar system, I threw in the towel on it. I gave up on it. So that's the, that's my short, quick news of the, of the morning there. For any of you that were struggling with that, I was too. And any of you that know me, I, I don't like to struggle very long. I find a better way. <laughs> But the rest of Kartra I absolutely love. Wouldn't give it up for anything. The rest of it is phenomenal. Um, so anyway, that's, that's that. Um, another thing, some of you have been asking if there are any apprentice openings. There is now an opening. I'm going to send out an email. If any of you want to grab that, you'll, you'll get word of it first. So look for an email from me later this afternoon. And uh, that's, that's going to come available. So, all right. How about you guys? What, uh, tell Quick me. Quick question where... about time trade. Okay, sure. Uh, will it sync with Outlook? I believe it does. Okay. I think I saw that. Um, Outlook is the Office 360, right? Yep. Yeah. Pretty sure I saw that option. Yeah. 
So you can you can check it out, make sure, but I'm I'm pretty sure I saw that one. Hey, hey, John. Yeah, hey, go ahead. Uh, I, I I put some questions in the uh, chat area, but I'm so glad that you updated uh, on the calendar thing because I was just about to recommend uh, setting up a calendar function for a client who needs to book coaching uh, events or oh. coaching or coaching. So this is like this is if this is a. <clears throat> If you've thrown in the towel, that's a, a big news, and I'm glad we got it right <laughs> recommendation. Yeah, uh, yeah. The only thing here's here's something that if you're if you're doing calendar events where people are paying to schedule, uh -huh. I don't, I haven't really thought that through with Time Trade, but that's going to be a a, a hurdle <clears throat> because they're not directly connected to your shopping cart anymore because they're on the outside of Kartra. That okay. was one of the one of the cool things about Kartra was you could have people pay to schedule an appointment. Yeah. So like do that what do you... an autoresponder though. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. So basically they they schedule the appointment and then you just send them to a pay link. Uh-huh. So it's just it's just an extra step. Not a big thing. Doesn't doesn't time trade offer the uh, the ability to charge them to book an appointment? Like I use Calendly, and they do. Um, you know, I'm not really sure, Tim. I they might. I didn't even look at it for that. I was just so excited to have my calendar under control. It was like, <laughs> I know. I, I mean, I bypassed it. I didn't, I never used it. I, I stuck with Calendly, but I mean, it, there's this features in there, and some of those programs have the features. It's you know usually the very top premium. Yeah. Oh yeah. That have sure. it, but yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Calendly. Calendly. How is that compared to the one that you just recommended? I think Calendly is probably very, very similar. I know a lot of people. In fact, I know more people that use Calendly and are happy with it than Time Trade. The only reason I went back to Time Trade was I already had an account. I was already familiar with it and I just reactivated it. All my shit was right there. <laughs> so I think. And I think you can test both of them out for free if you're not familiar with either one of them. <laughs> test them out for free for 20 days or so, whatever their, their free trial is, and see which one you like. It's personal preference. Yeah. I looked at yeah. Calendly a while back because one of my clients had set it up, and it, it looked almost identical to Time Trade. So I, I'm not sure there's much difference, if anything at all. So if you're, if you're familiar with Calendly, I would go with that. That's the only reason I went with time trade. I was just familiar with it. So it, it integrates uh, or they both integrate with Kartra using via Zapier or how do you? Well, I'm it? not even, I'm not even using Zapier. I'm using a form on the front end on, on Kartra. So I collect the lead before they even get to the calendar. So oh. they fill out, they fill out the form. They say, yeah, I want to schedule. And then the thank you page, pops up the scheduler right inside the, the calendar system. So, so you got, got my lead, then they schedule, then I can follow up. I see. Okay. I mean, I was doing the same thing with the one shopping cart. Yeah. Yeah. So um, same, same so deal. And then in, uh, in time trade, it sends out the reminder emails automatically too. So you don't have Calendly to. Calendly does too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure they're, I'm sure they're probably, pretty much the same. I probably should have gone with Calendly just so I could learn it and get it because I'm, I'm sure it's the same thing and more people are probably using that one. Chris, I use Calendly if you have questions and what I do is I actually make people pay first and then they get my calendar link. Ah, uh, okay. So I have it as a product. I have the coaching as a product, you know, uh, the amount, and then you can have like, six different kinds of time frames. Like I've got a 30 minute calendar, a 60 minute calendar, a 90 minute calendar inside Calendly. And for the coaching product, however long it is, I send them that link and then they can book their time. Okay. Yeah. Thanks Lisa. Yeah. Um, really so cool. One of the questions I had is, uh, so if, if we have a client that has an event that's typically held once a month, how do you duplicate the entire sequence, including, you know, modifying the date such that, you know, you don't have to go in through, you know, 15 emails to change the date in every freaking email. <laughs> well, 
Well, is, is it a recurring thing or are they just picking yeah, a date every month? Well, it happens, yeah, on like usually the, the in the mid month, 15th of every month ballpark, uh, depending on the weekend. Do, the they weekend. do they have to sign up fresh or is this people that are repeating? They do a social media campaign on Facebook and other um, platforms. Okay. So, because I was going to say, if, if it's something like that, that could almost be the same way I do this call. You know, this call is a recurring, repeating thing. And sometimes it moves to a different date. Yeah. So what I do is I just, I just don't plug it into automation. I just, I just duplicate the outgoing invite and just send that out every week. <clears throat> it just keeps it a little more flexible for me in case I need to change the call. And it's literally, it's just click, 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 and out it goes. So it's, it's not like it's time consuming or a big deal. Well, what, what this is, is basically it's, it's an event where they do a Zoom event with uh, about 50 to 100 people. And they, we've integrated with Twilio. So the first email gets that sent out, then there's a text, then there's another uh, grounding session email that they do three days prior to the event. And there's a reminder email 24 hours prior. And then there's a text, you know, an hour before and then an email hour before and then a reminder during the event and then a reminder after the event. And uh, okay, so here, here's a, here's a way to do that. Here's a way to have one point of update for you. Yes, that's what we need. Okay. So I just figured it out for you. So, all of your emails point to one point of reference to get the current dates. And then you create a page that has the current schedule. And then all you have to do is update that one page. So every email references the same page. And you just say, hey, our, our upcoming event, check the schedule to get the current date. And then they click the link, it goes to a landing page. And you just change the date on that one page for everyone. But what about the reminders, John? Because I got a similar thing going on with Chris. I have an event that is around the same time. But so what he's asking is what about the hour before reminder? What about the text stuff? That all has to be date and time set. Yeah, it's you could you could pretty much do it the same thing if you knew the thing was going to go on, you know, on a particular time. You wouldn't, you wouldn't get it down to the hour that, you know, you're, you're talking about, you're just, you know, there's no way around manual labor if you want to get that specific on something that's a moving target. But if you're, if you're trying to lock in and automate as much as possible, the way that I'm talking about is a, it's a, a way to do that. You would just have to get your, you'd have to train your people on the fact that, hey, you know, you need to get this on your schedule so your schedule can remind you because we're not sending out last minute notices and all that. Yeah. And that, it's just a matter of training to who you're, who you're working with. But, uh, but to Lisa's point, if you, if you really need to do it on that minute by minute basis, there, I don't know of a way to, to automate a roving thing like that. Yeah. You, you, have, you have a lot of touch points and uh, you would have to update, you know, multiple things in multiple places to, to really get that level of control. Now, you could make a list. You could make it easy on yourself or your outsourcer and just say, hey, here's a list of touch points. These need to get updated and just um, hand that off to them. And, and what about using, uh, like, uh, the membership or a calendar function? in that I know that you're swaying away from calendar, but I was thinking if this could be a, a, you know, a monthly event or something like that, and then duplicated in the calendar uh, or scheduled in the calendar in advance, that might be a solution too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you could do that. Know. Cause the, cause the calendar would automatically trigger off the event date and time. So yeah, it would, it would, it would be able to send your follow-ups, your text messages, your emails, based on the calendar date. So if you were willing to deal with Kartra's calendar, that would be a way to do it. So what you're saying is use, a, a, do a test case 
uh, with the calendar event automation. Yeah, you could you could try that and see if that worked for you. <clears throat> that would be a way to, to skin the cat. Um, and then I have one other question on the sequence. There's these little blue numbers at the top of every sequence. Do you know what those represent? I mean, typically they start off with one. Um, if you could, if I could, I could, could I share my screen? Yeah, yeah, share so I can see what you're looking at. Okay, so here's the sequence. Welcome. Ah, gotcha. Thanks. Grounding session. And I'm pretty sure that blue number, those numbers are numbered in sequence as you create those. And so how do we change that? Here's the problem is that if people register right up to the event or like, you know, an hour after the event or the, they started the event and they, they register on the system, here's what happens. It starts off with number one or, you know, the least number it starts off with five and it goes to you know four whatever is next it doesn't go in the sequence that we we want it to and we want to change this i don't sequence. i don't think those numbers have any bearing on that those, well, those that numbers happens. those num when someone registers after the event starts it goes from numeric one two three four five six or if you've deleted one and said, oh, I don't, I don't need that sequence. It, it goes to the next one. Uh, are you sure about that? Because I've, I've played around with that and I, I know what you're talking about. It's like yeah. if you add another one and you put it in a different order because they're supposed to go like, see the arrows? It goes from the yellow ball to the next one. Yeah. And then inside there, when you set the, uh, the time delay, you can you can set the time delay by days or hours, you know, from the last call or or from any you know any of those. So the time delay is immediate after, or yeah, that would be. So when you say immediately after, that means if you've got three immediately after, they're all three are going to go boom, boom, boom instantly. Yeah. So you need to put a, a time delay in there, like a, a wait a number of hours or days, or you can do a specific date. If you do a specific date, though, that's one of those touch points. You're going to have to go back and update. So that's exactly. I well. would re I would refrain from specific date if this is a moving target. Yeah, that's why we do immediately after. This yeah. Sequence. So, so if you're doing immediately after, all of those are going to fire instantly. After the the time has started. So, say the yeah. event is started, and people are still piling in. Yeah, like um, every every one of those is going to fire at the same time because oh, you're going awful. immediately follow immediate 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 so it's instant. So what hap how do we fix that after an event has started so that they don't either don't get get the sequence or um, they get an alternate sequence? Okay, so with that over in the side there, you've got a split. Okay. Over in the left side and on the blue column. Oh, okay, yeah, right here. You you've got a split so you can do like an either or. It's kind of like an if then type thing. Okay. So you can say, you know, if, if it's after a certain date, I think you can you can say skip this and go to step seven or whatever. That's why uh, those numbers are there. That's the number of the step. It doesn't mean they're in that order. So you can say jump to number 13, and then when number 13 fires, it's going to be on number 13, and it's going to look for what's next. Not in, num not in numerical order, if that makes sense. Okay, so it, it definitely won't go, you know, 13 to no. 1. No, they're numbered so you know what step it is, and, and they don't necessarily mean it's in step 1, 2, 3. It's so okay. when you set up a, a split or something, you can say, if this, then skip to step, you know, 13 or step seven, or you can even go back. You can go back up the hill too. So like, how would you say split conditions if, if they've already started would be, you know. If you can, you can say subscription date was, 
you can say, okay, if the subscription date was after the sequence started, then skip them to step whatever. Oh, so after, but it says date. Yeah. So, so if you've got dates and you're like, let's say you're starting on Monday and you're going to do the live event on Friday and they come in on Wednesday, you don't want to send them the Monday, Tuesday emails. You want to send them the Thursday, Friday emails. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's just now I have to educate. You can, uh, you can get as complex as complex or as simple as you want with all of this stuff. Uh, what I really recommend is you get away from dates for your evergreen stuff. Oh, like, so how, yeah, this goes back to my first question. How do you do an evergreen webinar? Where I'm going <clears throat> like what I do when I, when I do the evergreen webinars, rather than doing the webinar itself, I don't even promote it as a live event. I promote it as a replay. So when they come to the opt-in page, basically it says, in fact, if you want, I can share my screen and show you what to, okay. let me find it here and I'll, uh, I'll, show you, I'll show you how I do it. Cause I just set this up for our, uh, our site pop program. Let's see here. Give me just a sec to, to find it. Okay. Mm, I have a question after Chris on this same subject. Okay. So I just found it. So let me share the screen here. And yeah, because I, I was doing the same thing, you know, and it was driving me as nuts as it was driving you trying to do all these live events. I wanted something that I could promote and not have to constantly do webinars. So when they come here, this is the sequence that starts with this one, Site Pop webinar sign up. So it's got a specific date, like it had this specific date in August and they, they hit reserve their spot that was prior to the live event. Now, when they hit that, then they go to the thank you, which this is just thanking them. The, the counter's counting down. It gives them the webinar link. Also sends them a, an email with the webinar link to join the webinar, or the calendar link to add it to their calendar, all that stuff. So that's prior to the webinar. Now, this also has this counter on it. So when this counter hits zero, and even over here on the original signup, this is the page that I advertise on Facebook. So if this counter hits zero, that tells, that tells Kartra, okay, this, is, this pre-launch is over. This webinar is, is running. This is, a, this is a live webinar. So it no longer allows them to book here. What it does, this zero counter forwards them now over to this page. So no longer can they sign up for the live webinar. Here it says, you missed it live, but we recorded it. Watch the replay. So they sign up now to watch the replay. Wow. Well, now, what if people coming in last minute, because a lot of this, especially with the marketing campaign that they had, there are so many people coming in uh, at the last minute and they were doing blast emails and they got them finally to the page, but they showed up late. It's a, it's okay. Even if they're a minute late and they got here, you still got them in your sequence. They just, oh. they just missed the live. So they're going to watch it recorded. So but it, 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 they might like have to that. wait. They might have to wait an hour for it or whatever, but that's okay. That's okay. Oh. So once they, once they sign up here, now the thank you page takes them right to the replay. Now I've got this section here, the order button. This button is hidden for so many minutes into the replay because I don't want them jumping right to the price. I want to present the value in the webinar before I give them the price or the ability to click to buy it. So this whole section is time delayed. So anyway, that's the replay page. This is the evergreen part. So anytime beyond that now, they get forwarded 
to the webinar replay sign up, they immediately go to the replay. And then the order button now goes to the same special offer. This offer expires in 24 hours. So when they physically hit this page, the counter starts. Doesn't matter if they came in Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. As soon as they hit this, this page, the offer starts and the counter starts running. And the, you can see three free months. That's the special deal. That's yeah. mentioned in the webinar. We tell them right in the webinar, even with the replay, click the link now. You got 24 hours left to take advantage of this. This is going away. So it doesn't matter when they come in, they still get the special offer. Now, when that, when that timer hits zero, then what we do is we send them to the two month free. And in the email follow-up sequence, we're telling them, hey, you missed, you know, you didn't hit this in time. You missed this. You're not, you keep, you know, three month free deal is gone, but you can still get two months free. We have a bunch of people sign up on the two month, probably more than sign up on the first one. It's like when they start seeing it disappear, they're like, oh shit, oh shit, get in on it. It like creates a frenzy. Now, I'll also get emails in the process. I'll get emails, people freaking out going, oh man, you know, my mother was in the hospital or whatever. They just, all kinds of wild excuses of why they didn't buy it for the first one. And they ask me if there's any way they can get in on that. And of course, I just send them a link. If they ask, they receive. Yeah. And, and that just creates goodwill on your part. But a lot of people don't ask. They just, they just buy the two month. Now, this one expires in 24 hours too. So when that one's gone, then we go for this one. This is the final offer. Now, notice on the final offer, I opened up a third option here. The other ones, there was only two offers. Now I offered a basic. So if anybody didn't buy because of the price, the email that goes out for this one says, you know, now we're in, out of the, we're out of the pre-launch, we're in regular mode, and we've opened up a lower version if, you know, if price was an issue. So now we pick up all the ones on the low end. Anybody that doesn't hit this will let this run for about a week, sending emails, reminders, and anybody that doesn't pick this up after a week, we're assuming it's a price issue. So then we've got one called Hail Mary. <laughs> and we and we throw the Hail Mary bomb. <laughs> and and basically we we drop the price again. So and we do this the setup fee waived. So they no, they no longer have to pay the front upfront setup fees. So this is on an ongoing uh email list that is is vetted. Yes. Like. Yeah, this is, this is basically being run out to Facebook ads. We've got the Facebook ads on hold right now because Facebook's got a virus problem with their apps. What wow. we found was anybody that was seeing our ads on, on, the, on the app on the phone and clicking on our links, it was taking them to a phishing page. And it's not just our ad doing this. They're, they're doing this across the whole board. So we're like, oh, hell no, we're not participating in that. We just put all of our ads on hold. Oh, wow. So yeah, yeah. I, I saw one on uh, one of these things that I signed up for. As it, it was like a game that someone was playing. I'm like, oh shit, what the hell is going on on my phone? Yeah, if you're if you're running Facebook on your phone, you might want to check. You might have a virus. How and do you check the virus? <laughs> the, the way that the way that you can generally tell is if you look at the usage in your Facebook app, it'll have like multiple gigabytes of usage. Facebook should not be running multiple gigabytes of, of you know, storage on your phone. If, if that's the case, you probably have the virus. Should I uninstall it or should I? Um... Yeah, well, you want to, yeah, you want to probably uninstall and reinstall it. That'd probably be the safest thing. So anyway, that's, that's the sequence. There's a lot of pages to it, but you can see what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And there's timers on everything. There's a, uh, there's a sequence that runs with this. So as soon as they hit the sequence, the, the, the emails start going out according to when they click, when they go, all of that. 
So it's, you know, it's kind of complicated. I could package this up. If you guys want this as a template, Yes, I can, I can oh, bundle this awesome. up and give it to you. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. And um, it, so this is run from an, when you're running ads. This is run basically from a evergreen ad or whenever you run it. And then yeah. how long does this sequence run, so to speak, from be, from ad to that last Hail Mary? Well, they're based on 24 hours. So <clears throat> they can they can opt in to see the replay anytime. Once they start the replay and they click the button to go to the actual offer, that's when the, that's when the timer starts. That's when the offer starts. Awesome. And so you send one email every day for yeah. six days or five, five opportunities? Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. And then when it, gets, when it hits this last one and it goes to the regular offer, I send that email for about a week. I send like two or three over a week's period. And then at that point, I throw the Hail Mary. So do you have the sequence uh, that you can give to us too? Mm -hmm. okay, yeah. That, yeah. Oh. Under, under communications. Let's see. Yeah. So we have the, the webinar sequence mm -hmm. and the replay sequence. Yay. And is that all packaged together in Kartra in what would be called a campaign then? It's not currently, but I can do that. I can, I can bundle up the form, the everything that's, everything that's in there. Yes. Oh, how do you do that? You go over to campaigns and you can see the campaigns that I've already created here. So what you do is you, you add a new campaign and I would just call this, or actually I call it evergreen webinar. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've done it before actually. Oh, this is how you can you can bundle up something that you've done for a client and you can transfer it to the client. Ooh. So, like if you if you use your Kartra campaign to create a funnel for a client, and you want to transfer it to them, this is how you do it. You bundle it up. Hmm. So here you can add a, a custom thumbnail to it, or you can actually put a video. Like if you want to walk them through all the touch points they have to change, you can create a video and, and put the video in here. So when it, when the campaign goes, they'll have the install video, which is kind of cool. Okay. So save and next. Now it comes to the assets. So this is where you, you have to add all the assets to the campaign. So you select a product and you just kind of start going down the list. Like if you want to add pages, I could just go in here and I could start selecting the pages. So these, these are, these are all the pages. Like that's the webinar replay, the sales page, the two month page. I would just add all of these pages in there. And then when you actually it's here, I, I listed it evergreen. So it's all of these evergreen pages. So the way the app imports it, then you'll create a campaign and then you can share the campaign and then it propagates in our thing with those same titles. Yeah, it would just it it would all connected. load. Yeah, it would load all those assets right into your campaign, all connected. You would just have to go in and, you know, change the, the things to make it yours. Sweet. So yeah, it's oh, awesome. The, the emails too? Uh-huh, everything. See the sequences, sequence, oh, yeah. forms. Sequences, yeah, okay. automations, sequences, forms, everything. All you have to do is you just go down the list here and you just start adding the stuff. Like here, I could add the this webinar replay sequence. Mm -hmm. And every time you add something here, you'll you'll see it adds it in there. Mm -hmm. Like I had, I had two of them. There's the offer sequence. So as you're adding them up, you'll see there's two assets under sequences. Hmm. So I, I just have to go through and make sure that I had every piece to the puzzle added in here, bundle it up, and then I can give you the share code and you can load it up. Awesome. So you can you Thank have you. to do that for all the forms or any just any asset including every, calendar. Yeah, every asset, if you've got videos, if you've got help desks, everything. Okay. 
calendars, memberships. Like if this, in mine, this adds them to a membership as well. You know, when they purchase the product, it adds them to a membership site to deliver on the, on the software. Cool. So it's got products, it's got memberships, it's got. And then we can take out, if we don't have a membership part of that, we can just take that out of the campaign. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. But I spent a fair amount of time building this thing out. This thing is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I wow. went I went through a lot of learning curve and there's there's a lot of pieces to the puzzle and uh but I'm happy to share that with you guys for sure. Wow. Thank you so much. So do you, do you recommend setting up a uh sort of a membership system to uh, allow these ongoing uh, I do everything <clears throat> I can tell you everything that I do has a recurring arm to it. So like that software, it's a SaaS software. It's a monthly subscription software. And when people get into that kind of a thing, they're using it in their business. You know, it's doing something for them. A lot of times they're selling it to other clients. So it's an ongoing thing. It's like, you know, it's like getting a phone. You don't get rid of your phone in your business. If you've got an asset that's working and functioning to deliver value in your business that you can't live without, those things, people pay forever for that kind of stuff. You have to make sure that you price it appropriately so it's affordable and it's providing way more value than, than what it's costing. Like to give you an idea, I'll just give you like a value proposition uh, for comparison of what that program is worth. What it does, it sends out search signals to Google to train Google's artificial intelligence that you belong at the top. It shows like people know your brand, all that stuff. You couldn't do that on your own. You'd have to get a whole bunch of people and depend on them to run these searches for you and do all that. We know that it's never going to happen, right? Other companies, there are some other companies that you can hire to do this kind of stuff for you, but they're charging anywhere from like 50 cents to a dollar to reliably do this for you. We're giving you 500 of these searches on each project per month. And on the low project, to give you an example, you get three projects on the low one. It's 47. We charge $47 a month for that. So three projects times 15 or times 500 searches each. That's 1500 searches per month for $47. If you were to pay, let's say a dollar a search through the competitor, which there's no way to really verify they're doing what they say like ours does, but that's $1,500 versus 47. I mean, what are you going to do? 1,500 or 47? It's a no brainer. <laughs> It's a massive value proposition. And now I've got somebody that's going to pay me $47 for a long, long time. You know, so you add up, you know, a hundred of those, a thousand of those, and now you've got a real business. So that's one thing you want to try and do is try and position yourself as long-term value, get people paying you like, a lot of people that are, are in following me, they're in the SEO business. You know, I know some of you guys are not like a lot of you from Craig's group. You're not in the SEO business, but a lot of the other people are. So they're selling services that people pay them on a monthly basis. And that is one of the biggest things where I see different entrepreneur types struggle. The ones that struggle the most do not have a recurring model to their revenue. The ones that get comfortable and life is great, they're not worried about making sales every time they turn around because they've got money coming in. It is a very game-changing thing in your business to create recurring revenue. You know, it's, it's almost a cliche, mailbox money. You know, in, in the MLM world, they have, they have thrived off of that concept because everybody wants it, but few people actually ever get to it and attain it. 
if you've got, or you can think of services that you can create or find somebody that's created them and offer them up to your customer base to get you a recurring revenue model, I guarantee you that's going to change your life. Even if you don't do it, like look at, look at me for an example of this. Every time I turn around, I'm looking for that. When Kartra came along, I'm like, oh my God, these guys will give me $40 a month for referring them. I have no problem referring Kartra because I love it. It works. It's a great value proposition and I'm using it. I never refer stuff that I don't use that's, that's not good. I don't do that. It's not worth it to me. I don't need the money that bad. But to find something that is as good as Kartra is, and they're going to give me 40 bucks a month for everybody that I refer forever, because tell me, who in their right mind is going to set Kartra up in their business to run their business on that backbone and then get rid of it? It'd be like shutting down your phone. You know, you're not going to do that. If you're running your business on a platform, you're going to run it for as long as that business is alive. And I'm going to collect 40 bucks a month on it because I brought it to you. I'm not doing the work. I'm not supporting the system. Well, I, I do help support the system because I refer it and I do that for you guys, but I'm not doing the coding. You know, it's not my responsibility. If it breaks, it's a whole team of people going to fix it really fast. Yes, Lisa. Okay, so I have to run. I'm supposed to be somewhere else, but uh, okay. I have three quick questions. First one is, has Be Connected figured out how to have you let us do the Zoom without joining Be Connected at the lower price and get the 500 seat webinar yet? I don't think they're going to do that. <laughs> they're, if you come in at the, at the 47, I think it is, if you come in at just the, the, or the 99, it's the $99 thing. They have three ways to join now. You can join and just get the connection generator, which is 99 bucks. One time or a month? It's, it's one time if you refer to people. Everything they have is a 40, $49 a month recurring. All you have to do is bring two people in and that goes away forever. You get it for life. Okay, I'm out. Doesn't, okay. Doesn't, doesn't matter, you know, which level you do, but, uh, but yeah, that's their kicker to get you to go up to the 299 is the zoom bonus. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. And, Second question. Oh, and okay. I'm working on getting that for us, for the, for all of our dominator members. So getting, I, getting the zoom deal like that. So you don't have to go through, be connected. You can get it right through this platform. That's what I'm, that's what I want. <laughs> that's I'm, what I'm waiting I have, I have been feverishly working on that since probably June. <laughs> I know. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. I'm going to get it through. It's <laughs> Yay! I believe I was, in you, John Limbacher. Okay. Was, in, in fact, I've got, I've got the guy's sticky note right here looking at me every day and I keep pinging him and eventually, ping him, ping him. Ping eventually he's going to fall prey. <laughs> Cool. Uh, second question I have, and this is just a preference. You know, uh, many of us here are also in a, a Craig Deswalt's uh, mastermind. Uh -huh. um, you send out a reminder email with everything in it. The link to our Zoom, the link to all the other videos, and not that anybody would, but anybody could simply copy and paste that link and send it to the world. Now, obviously, there's a group of 20, we all kind of know each other, but you say you've got about 200 members here. Mm -hmm. what, what's, other than your own brain and memory, what's to stop somebody from coming in and putting in a name like Doug, you know, I mean, I don't know, and not have their screen on and get all the value without paying with the way you do it versus the way Craig does it, which is he sends out the reminder the night before, but he makes us re-register. And the question, is there an advantage because now he has the names and emails of the people stored somewhere? And also, does that generate a different link every time? Okay. 
So the, the way, the difference between the way Craig does it and the way I do it is I just like shit simple. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't like to complicate things. If somebody gets a free ride and they take advantage of me, so what? Okay. You know, it's, it's so what? If I can provide value to somebody that needs it, I'm good with that, you know? Now, on the other hand, occasionally I will change up my links. So like, here's something that I do. Occasionally what I'll do is I'll change the links to the meeting and I don't tell everybody. And I'll send an email out. Usually you guys that are subscribed and paying are the only ones that get that email. But occasionally what I'll do, I'll send an email out as an oops. It's not really an oops. It's very intentional on my part. But I send it out as an oops email and I send it out to my entire database. And I send it out as the meeting notification for the call. And I talk about something really hot that we're going to be discussing. And I don't put the links in it. I put the link to the membership site to log in to get the link for the call. And it creates a frenzy because everybody's clicking on the link and they can't get in because they didn't pay for it. And then they, they send me emails like, hey, can I get signed back up? I'm like, certainly you can. Here's the link. So I, I do that. I kind of play that. It's fun to play that game. It's... <laughs> So that's something that I do and it, you know, and it comes off as an oops, but it's not, it's very intentional on my part. So, so why do you think Craig does it the way he does it? I was going to, I'm try, was trying to ask um, for that. Get to it. So. Cause he's Craig and he wants to do it his way. Well, I want to know what's the advantage. <laughs> I'm Tim, I want to do it my way. Well, I'm I, I, not to say anything bad about Craig. No, not, no, at, not at all. I love Craig. He's awesome. But it is a, you know, and, and not, I'm not calling him greedy, but it's a greed factor. I am, I am very much not greedy. Like, I don't really care. <laughs> you know, I, if, if I can provide value, like I said, somebody is, is probably going to come onto the call for free. Like, like you say, say somebody sends it out. In fact, I encourage people that buy this to share it with their team. That's one of the bonuses and the benefits of being a member of my, of my Act Dominator membership is you can have your team come on and get the support of this call. I say, you don't have to do the work. Put your team on the call. Let me train your team and let me do that for you. So I can have my new Karcher girl come on here with you? Sure. Yeah. Damn. Absolutely. That is one of the benefits of this membership. It's not just for you. It's for your, for your team. It's if it benefits you, I'm in, I'm all in for it. Well, that's great because one of the things that I'm going back and forth with her on, which she could get it from the horse's mouth is uh, I took my membership away and just created a recurring billing and then they get a page with all, like you said, like you were telling Chris, with all the assets, the times are constantly updated in one place because for whatever reason, they were having a real hard time with the membership. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I want to password protect that, which was, which would then of course eliminate the whole help desk and self billing problem because they would have a username and password. Yeah. So she says you cannot password, you cannot get a username and password for anything but a membership. And I said, well, but my leader, you, says that is uh, not true and that I can password protect any product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So is that in the product setup? Or um, how do I, how do I? The password protecting thing, that is going to be in the membership area. So you can have a membership that's open or protected and you can have it protected based on access levels. Like if somebody has a tag or oh. purchases a product or anything like that. Okay, but that's what, 
I just said is I don't have to use the membership. You, I thought you said I don't have to do the membership. Oh, correct. You don't have to. You could, like when you create a product. Yes. When it comes to the fulfillment tab, instead of checking the membership, you can check either a page or a yeah. download or nothing at all. So you could do a page or a download, like you could send them to a page that gave them access to everything they needed. Yes, or, or you could, have. Or you could send them a download. You could give them a file, a zip file, where they download all your stuff in that zip file. You could do it either one of those ways. And that's in the product setup. And then there's a yep. access thing where they have yeah. to get your name and password. Yeah, as you're stepping through setting up the product, you'll come to the tab, I believe it's tab four or five, and that's where it is uh, fulfillment. It's the fulfillment tab. Fulfillment, okay. And that's where you set up, okay, after they purchase the product, how do they get it? It's either okay. delivered through a membership, a page, a download, or nothing at all. And then does it say the word access and then you say yes or no, they have to have access? No, it's just if they buy the product, this is how you're going to deliver it. Okay. So how do I pass, how do I give them a username and password? Okay. You don't really need to because if you're, if you're sending them to the page, you, they're the only ones that are going to have the link to it. You could, if you, okay, here's a, here's a way that you could do that outside of all of this. You could create a page on your WordPress site and you could password protect that. But if you're, if you want to password protect it and give it a username, just put it in a membership and then let Kartra deal with all that. But that was the reason I took it out of the membership. I don't know what's wrong with my people. They are the worst. They can't figure stuff out. So just give it to them. Just let them download it. I do. And what do you want to password protect? They just bought it. Why, why password protect it? Just give it to them. Because all they got to do is copy and paste the URL and send it to all their friends. And I'm and they, telling you. They could do that anyway. If they, okay. if they get access to your membership, they can do that. I'm trying anyway. to solve two problems. Because again, if they have a username and password, then self-billing works. Without them having to real to go back and try to find that invoice number, yeah. and I sent you that I sent Kartra what you printed out to us. I hope other people did. If they did, great, thank you. And if they didn't, please do it. But <laughs> Kartra wrote back to me going basically. It's, yeah, it's, you know, it's one of those things. They they get it. They understand there's a problem, but they've got other things that are hotter on the plate to to deal with. So I'm sure they'll get around to it eventually. But people can't, I mean, how is it people can't update their own credit card or change a credit card? You know, they can't do it themselves without that invoice number or a username and password. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do it with the membership area and everybody, you know, is able to do it. If not, I just have them, you know, just send it over and I just update it. It's not that big a deal. I mean, what do you mean you send it over? I just have them, you know, send me whatever they want updated and just update it for them. In other words, get their credit card on the phone and then you do it. Or yeah. Have a, have yeah, it's not, not that big of a, a deal. I mean, it doesn't come up that often, really, for me. It's, All right. Yeah. All right. Maybe, okay, thank you. Maybe once or a month or something. A help desk <laughs> area for billing and then that's just a <clears throat> area at least where you can say in your help desk this is a help desk uh system please send me your credit card information yeah and but nobody's going to type the, out their credit card information and send it over the web <laughs> <And> <laughs> here, here's another thing that i do because as you guys know i'm pretty freaking lazy <laughs> nah. so if somebody let's say i get an email from somebody and they say oh you know my credit card expired and i can't get access to the membership anymore you know what I'm going to do, right? I'm just going to send them a link to sign back up. I just send them the cart link. Here, here, you know, sign back up. Just use the same email address. It'll put you right back in. Oh. Oh, problem solved. Your self-billing problem is solved right there. That's how I do it. And hey, that might be the solution there, Lisa. If I, if I get one that is seriously challenged beyond that, then I just say, hey, call our, call our office number and Barb will take your info for you. Yeah, I don't want to go back into it, but I had somebody call me, give me 
all the information. I couldn't update it because it was the same card with a different expiration date. Their system does not allow that. Hmm, that's interesting. The system does not allow that. I have, I have it in writing. So huh. they said they can only use that same credit card if they re-register using a different email address, therefore com com uh, creating a whole brand new record, wow. or they can keep their same email address and use a brand new different credit card, an entirely different number. Uh, it does not allow you to update just the expiration date. That's the, interesting. Yeah, I got that back in writing too. That's what I'm saying. It's just... <laughs> It's little it. little things they need to get to. Yeah, little so. things. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I have to jump off now. I really appreciate. Yeah. Back one more point. I want to jump back just to finish off the contrast between me and Craig, because on the, on the first side of the fence, it makes Craig look greedy, right? On the other side of the fence, I do things very differently than him that makes me look like the greedy one. See, when it comes to membership sites, Craig does a lifetime membership. One time you get access for free. That would be a, the generous way to go. I say hell no to that. <laughs> I'm not doing anything for life, lifetime access. <laughs> so that's where that's where we shift and, and I become the greedy one there. So, <laughs> But I believe in providing massive value for a small amount of money forever. Gotcha. And I've built my business on that and it's done very well for me. It's just maybe a different concept, a different way of thinking, but I've got people that have been following me for 30 years that absolutely love me. And so I'm not going to change. <laughs> yeah. I, I, Alex Mendozian uh, once said, and he's brilliant. He said, well, when people start to steal from you, you know, you're really doing great. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And here's another thing. If they're going to do that and you're going to allow them to do it, which I would encourage, make sure that you brand your stuff properly. So all roads lead back to you. Cause let's say somebody gets some, one of your things for free. It's like Craig's concept of do everything well, cause you don't know who's watching, right? Somebody might get one of your pieces and wind up falling in love with you and coming over and buying your stuff and becoming a lifetime value prospect because you allowed someone to give it to them for free. I guarantee you in the long run, you're going to make more money. Okay. Guaranteed. Don't worry about that stuff. Don't beat yourself up and, and stay up at night thinking, oh my God, somebody's going to steal my shit. Who cares? You know, yeah. give it, let them. Just brand it so all roads come back to you and just do good stuff, you know? It'll That's come right. back to you. Thank you, John. <laughs> all right. You, you do excellent stuff. Appreciate it. I got to go. Okay. Hey, hey, John, I have one more question about uh, multiple domains on Kartra. Is there a way to have uh, multiple, multiple domains using a uh, starter package or do you have to upgrade? You can actually pay for them individually. I think they're five or ten dollars a month each. Okay. And do you contact support or how does that work? Yeah, just contact support. Say I'd like to add an add-on domain and they'll send you a billing link for it. And that allows us to send emails from that on the billing side, or does it still come from the main? I think it still comes from the main one. What you can do is and in, in this I just figured out recently, you can send email from different email addresses. You just have to do it manually. You, you, there's one default, like when you set up the Kartra mail default, it's one default and you can select the default, but you can also edit it. Like if I were to go into my account and send you guys all an email, I could edit the email manually right there. As long as it's a valid domain and you use the same return to as sender, it should take it and it should go through. Uh -huh. So I just recently found that out. The other way to do it is if you want default accounts set up in there, then you could set up a SendGrid account 
And you could, you know, you could use that as your default account, or you can pick between the two when you're, whenever you go to set up an email, whether it's an automation or a sequence or whatever it was, you could always set it up picking either one. And uh, that said, here's a way that I've recently come to terms with that if you want to import a list, let's say you want to import a list and not get your Kartra account banned, you import the list, put a particular tag to it so it's very identifiable, or put it on a separate list altogether, and only send to that list using your SendGrid email gateway. That way they're in Kartra, you can still communicate with them, just do not use the Kartra email gateway to send to them unless they came in and opted in through Kartra. So that's a, a way around it. So for any of you that want to import lists, just do not email those lists that you imported with the Kartra gateway. Use the SendGrid gateway to email them. Once they opt in into other stuff, then it's okay. You're cool. But to, to send cold email to a, a prospect list or something, Kartra is not going to let that fly. Wow. What is SendGrid? SendGrid is a third-party email provider and they're bulk friendly. So you can, it's one of the integrations inside Kartra. You can set up a, a SendGrid and it has a link right there to sign up for a SendGrid account. And I think they have a small amount you can use for free, but I know Gary, I know several people have used that because they got their Kartra accounts banned because they did what I told them not to do. And, and they had to do that. And I think they said it was, it's not very expensive. It's like 10 or 20 bucks a month or something for, you know, for an account. So not that Thank bad. You. Sure. Hey, Chris, can you uh, show us, um, go live on your camera and show us your crash cart? I saw something really cool. Show us the what? Right behind you, your crash cart. Oh, crash cart? Yeah. Talk us through your production system over there. That's pretty cool looking. <laughs> oh, uh, this is a, uh, uh, it's a portable uh, stand-up desk. Oh, that's so cool. I, so I can uh, basically um, move it around the house if I need to uh, be in a different room. And it's, uh, it's all self-contained. And I got this for about 80 bucks on, I don't know if you can see that, on Amazon. It's, it's a, this is a um, additional monitor and it just hooks up. That, that looks like the setup Craig has in his bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, minus the toilet. <laughs> oh, that's funny. The stand up it's only about 80 bucks and the, the uh, extra monitor is about 100 bucks. Huh. That's cool. So do you do live videos or something from it? Well, yeah, I mean, Sally does uh, webinars and stuff like that. So yeah, it's really she, cool looking. So you can stand up, you've got a light there, you've got, um, yeah, you, know, you so. can move it into position for your, your green screen. Yeah, this is the light for the you're going to be on screen and it's on wheels which is cool on wheels, yeah cool so tim i see a message here from you about the affiliate thing and are you saying that kartra is not allowing you to be an, a kartra affiliate for their products is that yeah I'm, i've been denied um, that, that's interesting because i know you're in the kartra I know you're in the Kartra affiliate universe because you're you're in there for me, and that's. I know. I just I'm, I'm I was just looking through it too of of like. Let me go into promotions. I don't know. I can show you the screen if you want, or get you to log in. I can't. I can't imagine why they would do that. Um. Yeah, I'll show you. I mean, uh, the, I'm gonna share it with you and show you exactly what I get. Did they? Uh... Denied. Here, this has been well. This is somebody else's, but like, if I go through yours, I'm okay. Yeah. I go to. 
Oh no, where's the Kartra? Kartra regular. The vendor has denied your application for a quest. That's weird. Um, I put everything, a, everything with Kartra, the diamond, everything, same thing. Huh. Silver. Denied. But uh, Ever Webinar, which is Ever Webinar, isn't that part of the? That's the part of their. Yeah, that's part I'm of their. In there. <clears throat> I'm going to send you a link okay. to sign up for their affiliate program. Let's see if that works. If not, then I, I would say put in a support ticket and ask them what the deal is. If mm -hmm. you haven't already. I wanted to know if possibly it had something to do with the fact that I bought that six month package at a discount from them. I wouldn't think so. I, I mean, I, I would have two months on or two or three months left on that package. Like I bought six months for like two ninety seven. Yeah, yeah, I I did the same thing when it when it first started. I got to, I got a really good deal the first year on it. Well, mine was because I left, and that that was an enticement package to get me to come back. Oh, like, um, it would be interesting, be interesting to see if if that might have been it. I mean, it might be a, it might be something that just got triggered from an automation that denied it. So if you want, uh, have you ever talked to Jennifer from Cartrail? No. I've not talked to anybody in, uh, on the phone from them. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, I can get you Jennifer's number. She's the, uh, she's the head of their affiliate division. Okay. And uh, we, can, we can get that straightened out for you because there, there's no reason they should deny you on that. That's crazy. Yeah, it's like I, I'm, I'm in the middle of, I've got my two memberships set up in there and I'm in the middle of trying to put all that stuff in for affiliates, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because most of my people are bloggers who are coming and they're looking for extra stuff like this. So I should be recommending it to them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, shoot me an email and I'll send you the link first. We'll try that. If not, we'll go, we'll go right up the hill to Jennifer and we'll... Tell her to tell her to get your get your straightened out. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Last thing I want to do is, uh, you know, I'm not heavy promoting everything. If, uh, you know, especially now where I'm just now getting it set up, and imagine if I do all the heavy promoting now, they all sign up without my affiliate link. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I get nothing for it. I, and I've had that happen before more than you want to know. Yeah. Well, definitely. Yeah, because the Kartra, man, I know I get a nice check from them every every month. So it's, uh, it's over into the, it's into the four figure mark. I'm a long way from the five figure mark, but I'm in the four figure mark. <laughs> do, do they um, do a discount on your membership first or do they send you an actual payment as a check? No, no, it's I mean, the, the affiliate program is completely separate from their billing. You still pay your bill just like you normally do. You get a, an affiliate payment out from them. So See, I, I would rather have that because like on StreamYard, I get credit. I don't get money on StreamYard. So like for my next six months, I'm not paying for StreamYard because I've got so many freaking credits. Yeah. I don't yeah. want the credits. I want, I want the actual cash in my accounts. Yeah. That's the way Kartra does it. That's, I don't, I don't think I'm trying to think if I'm on any that do credits. I can't think of any affiliate programs I'm on that are credit. They're all segregated. They're, well, yeah, it's like uh, StreamYard doesn't do affiliate. StreamYard does credits. And, um, you know what I mean? Well, that's huge for me because everybody asking podcasts is like, what do I use? StreamYard. Um, <laughs> but every time, if, if, if John, if you started using StreamYard because I recommended it, you get a $10 credit. I get a $25 credit when you start paying. So it's credited on both sides. Um, and again, I how many people I interview on a monthly basis, It's it's that's where my, that's that's huge for me because... I, it'll be years before I have to pay for it again. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Get a, get a free ride. Might as well. <laughs> where do you sign? Where do you see the accounting of your affiliate program, John? That's you inside Kartra. My affiliate uh, promos at the bottom. Is that right? Is yeah. That right? It's the affiliate promo link at the bottom inside Kartra. Okay. It's on the left hand side. Uh huh. Yeah, it's in the blue bar on the left, and then up at the top, you can see your analytics. You can go over to the far right and see payments, and you know you can see all the payments that are coming into you. Under okay. the 
under the promotions tab, you can go to any one of the products and you can see, you know, like how many leads have come in, how many conversions, all that stuff. So there's uh, reserve and then earned. I guess earned is what you earned. Not yeah, the way the way most affiliates run is they hold amount in reserve for 30 days. Uh, so earned is how much they owe you and in reserve is how much they're holding for that grace period. Uh, okay. So eventually eventually there should be no reserve. It should all be earned and paid. And I believe they're on a 30 day uh, buffer. So like if somebody if somebody returns it and, and gets their money back, they don't want to have paid the money out and then try and have to get it back. So you send a physical check or a, or, or a link to download or something? They, they do uh, PayPal for the most part, which I know was a pain in the ass because I had my PayPal accounts all shut down. I had to create another PayPal account just so some of my affiliate things could come through. <laughs> Oh shit! Yeah, because our billing at Webgear Masters PayPal account was shut down. <laughs> you got shut down too. Yeah, yeah. Those, yeah, those they're they are yeah. absolute yeah. thieves. If any of you guys are using PayPal, I highly recommend you don't leave any money in it because when they shut your account down, they grab your money for six months and hold on to it. You'll you'll so, get it eventually. But, yeah, it's there, you'll get it eventually. Like they grabbed over thirteen thousand dollars out of out of one of my accounts, and they're holding it for six months. And yeah, that's what happened to us, and and that's I think banking scam. I mean, that's that's yeah, like it is. And multiply that by you know ten million customers. Yeah, that's that's millions of dollars that they're just banking on interest. Yeah, exactly. They're they're just absolute thieves. And nobody's regulating them. I'm like, really? You know, why does the FTC not walk into their door and just shut them down because of that crap? You know, there's no regulation on it. It's crazy. So how do we uh, change this? <clears throat> do we send them a request to change our... our you can change it right inside. If you go into your, your My Affiliates and okay. your my affiliate promos and then you go under payments and the payment settings you can change your uh, paypal address right there okay great so pretty Thanks. easy pretty easy to change it i just had to do it with like 30 different affiliates that were all paying me with paypal yeah i gotta tell you though luckily it was really lucky for me when they shut my paypal account down it was like right after I had paid all of my affiliates because I, you know, that account usually gets, you know, 40, $50,000 in it. And then I, I pay out everybody at the end of the month and I pay them all with PayPal. So luckily I had just paid everybody and there was like 13 grand left. That was like leftover profit. And that's what they grabbed. If they would have grabbed the whole amount before I paid everybody, I would have really been pissed. <laughs> But for me, luckily, I got that. I got those all. Everybody paid out before they did that. You know, it's and they don't even give you a reason. They say yeah. your account is uh, sh locked for uh, uh, suspicious activity, and then you call them and they say, "Oh, we can't discuss it with you." Well, wait a minute. Hold yeah. on. I've been in business with you for ten years. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Uh, my account. My account was eighteen years old. And all I'd ever done was just do more and more business every year with them. Nothing oh. changed. Nothing changed. And, and I got the same thing after three hours on the phone with them. All they would tell me is, we can't tell you anything. You would have to go to our legal department to get any answers. And they're not going to answer you without a subpoena. <laughs> I'm like, really? I need a subpoena to talk to someone about why you screwed me? You know, it's, that's just crazy. Wow. Very, very nutty. So, but anyway, I, I'm over it. I'm just going to wait the six months, get my money back, move on. <laughs> it's not worth, you know, you, you fight the battles you can win and you let the rest wash under the bridge. Awesome. Okay. Thanks guys. All right. Anything else before we uh, 
wrap up for this week. Yes, John, can you show um, how you changed? Uh, first of all, did you change your, uh, your calendar out of Kartra? Yes. <clears throat> and what I did, I, I left, I'm still using Kartra. <clears throat> like I'll show you guys again here. Let me pull my website up. I'll show you what I, what I did with it. I only changed really one piece of the, of the sequence and made a huge difference for me. And this is, this is also in the beginning of the call too, if you ever want to go back and, and watch the replay. But like on my website, I've got this opt-in for my free strategy session. When they click that, that's a Kartra button. This is hooked to a Kartra form. So the box pops up, you opt in, and the thank you page now goes right to my time trade to schedule. And there's a little notice here, just kind of give them instructions. They click the, that and it goes right to what's available. That's cool. That's and the where, did, where did you make that? You made that change on your thank you page, right? Yes. So this is just the thank you page in my form. That's the only thing I had to change inside Kartra. I did pause my calendar in Kartra because I, I don't want the Kartra calendar operating as well. I only want one calendar sister system operating. So I went with time trade. Calendly is probably equally as good. I'm sure it works pretty much the same. So whatever, uh, whatever you like, all you have to do is just take the form where they opt in in Kartra, change the thank you page to point directly to your calendar scheduler. So that's it. Pretty simple. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, so when, when can you get that uh, sequence set up uh, so we can copy it uh, or you're going to send us a, a link? To oh, the webinar sequence? Let me go, let me go through it because as, as good as it looks, it's not quite completely done yet. There's still okay. like a couple of more things I'm, I'm planning to put in it to really polish it off. And uh, once I get that done, I'll, I'll just add all the stuff in there and then let you guys know. Thank you so much, John. In fact, I'll, I'll just put it up in the member area for everybody. Cool. Uh, just let us know. <laughs> I, I'll, what I'll probably do, too, is I can do a webinar on it and kind of yes. walk everybody oh, yeah. through, like, the whole, the whole thing. So Yes, yes. That would be – see, that's what I'm all about, max value. I give you guys max value. <laughs> hey, hey, John. Um, I don't know if Chris asked you this question earlier. I've kind of coming in late on the call, but um, you know, when you have that calendar, that calendar function, is there any way to dynamically change those? Uh, you know, if you have a sequence built out um, and let's say you want to do the same event month after month mm -hmm. and you don't want to go in and change every single uh, email message that has the date in it, yeah, yeah, we did. We did cover that in the beginning of the okay. call. There's, there's a couple okay. of different ways to do it. What, okay. what I chose to do rather than doing that, um, the way you're talking about is I chose to just turn everything into evergreen and every, all of the sequences are all based on times and timers on, on when they come in. Like, let's say I run Facebook ads and somebody hits my ad on a Monday, they go into the sequence on Monday the timers are based on that. Somebody else comes in on Tuesday, their timers are based on that. So they all get the same experience no matter when they drop into the system. And, and Dan, that's the one he's going to send and duplicate okay. so that replicate uh, and he's going to put that up at the membership area. But ultimately, um, you know, the solution actually to manage the time and dates is instead of uh, putting the dates in each and every email, you put a link to the email that goes to a specific page, uh, a landing page that, that is, you know, modified at, at will, but it's, it, it's like, has a date and time. So it's it just a link to the page. So it says, when you're, when you're ready to go for this event, here's the link to, to all the dates and times. Ah, uh, okay. Well, we'll, we'll <clears throat> talk about that offline and, and yeah. thank you, John. Yeah, absolutely. 
And one more question here I want to hit uh, for Woody. Woody, I we need to kind of hit up your site and get you back on track for that. So my new calendar schedule is back in order. So just go on to my website on the internet dominators.com and just schedule a time slot. Let's get you back, uh, back in play. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, I think that's it. Any, anything else? Last minute stuff you burning questions all input and all the value you do give to us john we really it's very very meaningful awesome even huh? just for inspiration uh, other than all the details thank yeah. you so much. I, th I think you know i think a lot of a lot of it is mindset a lot of what you can learn from me is just the way i see things the way i you know do business the way i think about you know the world <laughs> i <Yes>. guess <laughs> yes. so it's it's worked out you know pretty pretty well for me and and the people that i know that do the same thing it's repeatable you know when you start thinking about things like i see so many people that get so caught up in in okay. you know thinking people are gonna gonna get the best of them or you know it's just it's a bad place to be <laughs> yeah. you should be thinking about just moving forward and what you can do and not worrying about you know all that little nitpicky stuff so anyway happy to share all right guys we'll have a great week uh, we will be on next week um, if i'm not down in san diego i'm in the middle of for those of you that know i'm in the middle of purchasing a boat finally I found my boat, put an offer, got accepted, and now we're in process. So I know Friday we're doing the final sea trials and all that. I'm not sure. If I'm gonna, it's a 55 footer. All right. So not sure if I'm going to have to be down in, in San Diego Thursday or not, but I know I'll be down there Friday. And then, John. John, did you decide Agreed. on the name? On the name of the boat? Uh huh. I have not. There it is right there. That's uh, that's what I'll be playing oh. with soon. The sea yeah, dominator. Yeah, it's got a beautiful interior for our little mastermind groups. Nice. When do we come? I know. Uh, After COVID. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll, I'll go now. I'll just put me on a map. <laughs> I, I exactly. I'm over COVID. We're ready to go. So over. We're ready to go. Uh, <laughs> Throw John? it on the board. Oh, it's beautiful. Hey, yeah. John. Yeah. If I come, if I come down to uh, Huntington Beach, can I ride with you? <laughs> sure, absolutely. All right, you just send me a time of one, 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 one to run up at your place. I'll be there. Look at that. <laughs> That's uh, pretty nice accommodations. That's beautiful. Uh, it reminds me of my days in Puerto Rico. My yeah. father, my father-in-law was a, a freelance <laughs> skipper who sk skippered these boats. <laughs> so anyway, that's uh, that's what I'm doing this week, or actually next week. That's what I'm doing next week. A acquiring this bad boy. Sea monster, sea dominator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the current name of it is Sea Snake. Yeah, that doesn't do that doesn't do it justice. Yeah, not not sure I really like that one. So we'll we'll definitely be renaming. But it's uh it's quite a piece of machinery. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. now you have to have I, would, a I would name it something cruel and mean like dominate this. <laughs> <laughs> you would. <laughs> well, you know, women are supposed to or boats are supposed to be women, right? They're yep. your lady. So maybe I'll call it Dominatrix. Mm -hmm. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, nice. baby. There you go. <laughs> John, do you have to have a captain's license to manage 50 footer? Um, I've got one up to 100 ton. Okay. So I'm good. That one's uh what is hey, that? Hey John, one? you know, Carnival just uh, put 18 of their uh cruise ships out on sale, so you know, don't uh, get, don't buy too fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, this They're the older one but you know 18 you know yeah i know i was looking for a much bigger boat but what i've decided is for the west coast 
this is about the right size boat for the West Coast. And when I get the bigger one, that one will be in the East Coast. That'll be in Florida. Because the, there's really no call for charter here on the West Coast for those big boats. So, and I don't, I don't really need that just for me. So I'll get the big one on the, on the East Coast, charter it out, do some big mastermind groups on it and go have fun with it. And this one will be my play toy. Sweet. We want to go play with you anytime. All so right. Well, I want to be played with, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. All, All right. right, guys. Well, hey, have a great week. Um, I appreciate you all for being here and participating, and uh, we will see you next week. Thanks, yeah. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye.